And then, as we turn to Egypt, where a leading journalist and human rights activist has been released following his controversial arrest this weekend, Hossam Bagat was detained after publishing a report on the secret convictions of 26 military officers accused of plotting a coup against the government of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. Bagat was interrogated for hours on charges of publishing false news harmful to national security. According to lawyers, he was offered a deal, never write about Egypt's armed forces again, and he could walk free. He refused. On Monday, officials announced they would hold him for four days. But after an outcry in Egypt and around the world, Bagat was released earlier today. For more, we go to Cairo, to uh, Sharif abdel Qadus, independent journalist, Democracy Now! correspondent in Egypt. Sharif, can you talk about uh, both the detention of Hossam and his release just a little while ago today? Well, it was uh, news that uh, caused a lot of amount, a great amount of joy here in Egypt uh, when he was released. Um, but at the same time, his arrest uh, is yet another instance of uh, state intimidation uh, against journalists and a crackdown against press freedoms in general. Uh, Hossein Bahgat um, is very well known, both in Egypt and internationally. Uh, we, he founded uh, the Egyptian Initiative for Personal Rights, which is Egypt's uh, probably leading human rights group. Uh, and then a couple of years ago, he turned to investigative journalism and quickly established himself as arguably the premier investigative journalist, both, uh, both locally and internationally, uh, in Egypt, and penned a series of uh, exposés painstakingly researched, very well written, um, and, uh, and very well reported. Uh, and the latest one was, uh, was looking at the secret military trial of 26 army officers who were convicted of uh, plotting a coup in coordination with the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, he got a hold of the indictment sheet. He spoke to relatives of the officers. No one had reported on this except for a very brief uh, piece in BBC, and he really delved into it, invested the allegations of torture, uh, that these officers were tortured as well. And, um, and following this, he was questioned. After his arrest, he was summoned to military intelligence, uh, and he was questioned for hours and hours, uh, much of it, some of it without lawyers or allowed to make a phone call, about this one article. Uh, he was held then for about a day and a half. No one knew where he was. He was held at military intelligence uh, and was, uh, was only released this morning. So, uh, you know, this is really a, a, an excellent reporter. Uh, and if Hossein Bahagat is guilty of publishing false news, that makes every journalist in Egypt a damned liar, and we're all guilty along with him. Uh, Hossam Bagat was a regular guest on Democracy Now! I want to turn to comments he made on the show in October of 2013, suggesting the U.S. and other countries should suspend aid to Egypt. In Egypt, especially after the massacres, of course, um, our position was that um, there should be um, investigations, there should be an independent uh, fact-finding, and there should be accountability. Uh, and until that takes place, and until the government also accepts um, responsibility for these killings, there should be a suspension of the provision of any arms or tools of repression from any country in the world. We're not just talking about the U.S. military assistance. And any resumption of the sale of weapons or the provision of weapons or tools of repression to the Egyptian government must be conditioned on accepting the retail training and uh, uh, provision of, um, um, you know, new tools for riot control. Uh, but that business should not continue just uh, as usual uh, when it comes to Egypt. That was Hossam Bagat on Democracy Now! two years ago. Sharif, as we wrap up, um, uh, where you left off, what message this sends to you and to other journalists, to Egyptian society. Yes, Hossam Bagat um, has been released, but he was also held, and that is a strong message. He was held. He's been intimidated. We don't know yet if he's going to be facing a military trial that's been made unclear. And we have to remember, there's many other uh, journalists that are in prison. There's three that have been sentenced to life uh, who were at the, the Rabah uh, the, the uh, protest. Uh, there's Mahmoud Abu Zaid known as Shaukan, who's been held for over two years without trial, which is in violation of Egypt's own penal code. And uh, Sisi has become increasingly hostile towards the media, recently uh, condemning the media for the uh, criticism of the government's lack of response for floods in Alexandria. A TV state anchor was recently suspended for uh, calling for people to be held accountable. We've seen the owner of uh, one of Egypt's biggest newspapers be arrested on corruption charges, though some speculate it's because of the newspaper's increasing criticism. Uh, and so this is the environment that, uh, that journalists are operating in, one of intimidation, uh, of, uh, of censorship, uh, and of arbitrary arrest. So it's uh, become one of the most dangerous places in the world to work as a journalist. 
uh, but people like Hossein Bahgat uh, really uh, give us hope because he continues uh, this kind of important work and uh, speaking truth to power. Well, Sharif, thanks so much for being with us. Sharif Abdel-Kudus, Democracy Now! correspondent in Egypt, just back from Yemen.